Hi, I'm Joey Wong, a lecturer of ACCA Paper P7 Advanced Audit and Assurance in Inti College, Subang Jaya. The P7 syllabus is divided into five major areas regulatory environment, professional and ethical considerations, practice management, assignments, and reporting. The regulatory environment differs from country to country. Under this chapter, it will bring forward knowledge from your paper P1 of ACCA Professional Accountant. For example, the examiner may be able to ask you questions like, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a rules-based and principles-based approach to auditing? This was asked in the December 2009 sitting of the ACCA P7 examinations. Apart from that, one of the key highlights of this area will be on money laundering. According to the ACCA Code of Ethics and Conduct, money laundering is a process by which criminals attempt to conceal the proceeds of their criminal activities to ultimately provide a cover for their illegal source of income. Ever since September 11, 2001, the attack on the World Trade Center of USA, the American government has been paying increasing attention to money laundering. It is believed that the best way to control people would be to control their money. So, by putting an end to money laundering, we believe that we will be able to cripple the operations of terrorists and international crime syndicates, effectively bringing us one step closer to world peace. As an auditor, we have various responsibilities pertaining to money laundering. For one, we need to perform client due diligence procedures, also known as know your client. In layman's term, to find out more about the background and identity of our clients. Apart from that, we also need to report any suspicions on money laundering to the relevant authorities. In UK, this will be the Serious Organised Crime Agency, SOCA. Next up, we'll be visiting on the area on professional and ethical conduct. For this area, it is largely the same as ACCA paper F8. The key difference here is that the questions are of a much more practical and realistic nature. The examiner will require you to look at ethical issues from both sides of the court. Next up, we'll be looking at the area on ethical and professional considerations. One of the main things to look at here will be one on professional liability. With the increasing number of lawsuits targeted towards auditors, we as auditors are interested in reducing our liability. For example, towards third parties, towards a company. One way to achieve that will be to use disclaimers in our audit report. Now, will that be appropriate? We will learn about that in the class. Going forward, I would like to talk about practice management, which is a way an audit firm is managed. In paper F8, you approach a paper from the point of view of an audit manager. In paper P7, you are given the chance to approach the audit from the point of view of an audit partner. So, one of the areas that you will cover will be on advertising. Can an audit firm advertise? For example, can an audit firm put in AirAsia style advertisements in the newspapers? Audit fee starting from 500 ringgit per year, Another issue on practice management would be on quality control. What is audit quality? It can be defined as giving an appropriate opinion on the financial statements. So, here we'll focus on two main auditing standards, ISQC1, which is on the firm-wide procedures, and ISA220, which is specific to individual audit engagements. Going on to the area of assignments, this is where we get to the gist of ACCA Paper P7. Here, you will need some knowledge of accounting standards brought forward from Paper F7 and P2. Not only must you know the knowledge on how to apply the accounting standards, you also need to know what are the required audit procedures to obtain the necessary evidence to support the financial statement assertion. 
This is a major area of paper P7. In paper P7, you will also be exposed to other forms of engagement, such as reporting on prospective financial information, forensics auditing, which is a new area to ACCA paper P7, and also on internal audit, which you did cover a little bit of it in paper F8. Finally, as always, reporting has been an important feature of audit papers in ACCA. In P7, not only will you be learning about audit reporting, you will also be learning about other forms of report such as reports to management, due diligence reports, and reports on social and environmental reporting, among other reports. Owing to the dynamic nature of this paper, it is very important not to adopt a road learning approach to paper P7. There is an ancient Chinese proverb which goes, give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish and feed him for a lifetime. Therefore, it is important not only to know the knowledge for this paper, but also the required examination techniques, which I will share with you in the class. Thank you for viewing this video. I look forward to seeing you in my class. Have a nice day. Thank you.